Welcome back, everybody, to the Metropolis Bulldogs Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. Today, we're going to look at the next generation of Metropolis Bulldog players here in the recruiting special. We're going to go around the country, look at the film and highlights of many of the players on our recruiting board, so it should be a very fun episode. If you would like a custom recruit for next year's recruiting class, make sure to go join the Discord server. The link is in the description. So these are our current recruiting restrictions. The one highlighted in red was a new addition for this season. But other than that, it's pretty much the same recruiting restrictions as last year. I want to make it a challenge, but I also still want to be able to get good players. And I feel that these rules have been able to help me do that. I really wanted to focus on adding to the number of pipeline states we have as we only currently have two in Ohio and Pennsylvania. So we're going after plenty of prospects in Maryland, Virginia, Indiana, and our home base, Washington, D.C. I really want to get this mid-Atlantic area completely filled up of pipeline states, and that's where a majority of the players we're going after are located from. We're only going after three prospects west of the Mississippi River, so I think it's pretty easy to tell where our focus is geographically on acquiring talent. I think this recruiting class is filled with talented players on our recruiting board, not just in quality, but also in quantity. And I think we're going to be able to land a lot of key players who can make big impacts very early on. In the previous dynasty we had before this one with the Westlake Hornets, in my opinion, the best and most influential recruiting class we had in that series was our second recruiting class. I think this one, being the second recruiting class of this series, could very well also be the best and most influential in this series just because of the talent level. I do very quickly want to point out that the bottom four players on the recruiting board from Josh Williams down, they are all low lock players. We added them on the board late. Keep in mind we can only get one of these four guys unless multiple of them commit during the same week. If you'd like a reminder of the low lock rules and all the other recruiting rules, you can go back like a minute or so in the video and that's where they all were. So let's now go position by position here on the recruiting board. Starting with quarterback, we don't have any because QB is not a need. There was one custom recruit quarterback in Bryce McAdams who's getting like no interest. We could technically put him on the board, but I just don't think it would make sense to have a five-star come to our program. So we're not going to do that, and we'll see how his recruiting battle goes throughout the season. Running back, we do have many guys on the board, and that starts with Damatha Catholics, Kemi Amembenigbo, who we talked about a little bit last year when he was a junior. Now as a senior, he has gone up to a four-star prospect. We projected him to be a three-star, but he has gotten off to a fantastic start this season with a bigger role in the Damatha Catholic offense, which has led him to go up in ranking. Of course, we know his older brother quite well, former DeMatha basketball player Deo Amembenigba, who of course stands at 7'3 and is the superstar center of the St. Louis Spirits. So Amembenigba here is a good foot and a half shorter than his older brother, but he's still very talented in his own right. It's going to be a two-way battle between us and Colorado. Hopefully we can land him. I think he would be a great addition to the offense. Running back D.D. Santander, another local kid. He comes from Archbishop Carroll High School in Washington, D.C., another player whom we talked about last year. I don't have any film on Santander because he has missed the entire season so far. He was ruled academically ineligible at the beginning of the season, and he still has not been able to get his grades up. So he has not been able to play this year for the Carroll Lions, and that's why nobody's really going after him except for us. I understand we need to hold to academic standards, but he's a really good football player, and if no one's going to go after him, we might as well. Another local kid, this is C.L. Frost from the powerhouse St. Francis Academy in Baltimore, Maryland. C.L. Frost is a very similar player to Kemi Amembenegba. This is a versatile chess piece for your offense. You can put it running back. You can line out at wide receiver. You can use him sort of in a Debo Samuel type role where he doesn't really have a position, and you can just put him anywhere on the field, and as long as he has the ball in his hands, he's going to make plays. I'm really surprised nobody else is going after him all that hard, but that's not bad for us because that means we should be able to get him pretty easily within the next few weeks. He had a pretty good visit to the campus last week along with most of the other prospects on our board, 
and we should have him committed within the next couple of weeks or so. We have a couple other guys on the board here. Andrew Williams, a very talented Juco player. He's someone who I think could contribute early. And then Anthony Johnson from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We just added him as another low lock player. We have one other custom recruit running back. This is James Miles. He is going to Tulane. I'm pretty sure he's quite a bit higher than a 65 overall, but it just says he's a 65 overall. I'm pretty sure I made him in the 70s. At fullback, none, because we don't really use our fullback. Wide receiver, we have two, led by four-star Ja'Kai Smith-Gardner, another local product. I promise not all of the players are from Maryland, but at least these offensive skill position players are. Smith Gardner plays for Archbishop Carroll, the same school that Didi Santander is from, and the same school that current Metropolis players Manuel Castillo and Osiris Young went to. We're building a nice little pipeline here with Archbishop Carroll, having Castillo and Young and likely Didi Santander within the coming weeks as well. Ja'Kai Smith Gardner is not the biggest. He's only 5'10, 174 pounds, but he's a very explosive football player. We are going very hard after him because he's a four star. We're very close to landing him. Penn State and Pitt are both in the battle, but we do have the upper hand. We need to keep that lead and get him committed before his Pitt visit in week nine. Dante Richardson comes from St. Francis Academy. He's a teammate of C.L. Frost, one of the top offensive duos, not just in the state, but in the entire country. There's not a whole lot of recruiting buzz with Richardson, and he's a player very high on my target list, but we're not really giving him any points at the moment because nobody's really going after him super hard. Once we get some of these other guys to commit, that'll open up some points, which I plan on opening with Richardson, and hopefully we can get him to commit by the end of the season. He's a 73 overall and somebody who can contribute very early on for us. If we can land him and Ja'Kai Smith-Gardner, that'd be a very big deal. We've got a number of other custom recruit receivers who aren't on the board. Both Smith Gardner and Richardson are custom recruits. This is Orlando Thomas. There's a five-way battle for him. I really hope he doesn't go to Navy because they barely throw the ball. Debo Campbell. He is a extremely talented player. We went after him at the beginning of the season, but it's very clear he wants to go to Oregon State, so it looks like he'll be a beaver. Directly one spot below him, there's Chase Ramsey the third. There's a tight battle going on with him. Iowa State holds a slight lead, but Northwestern, Louisiana Tech, and Western Michigan are also in the battle. Now as we move to tight end, a position I'd like to get younger at, we have a prospect I really like here in Georgie Bucciarielli from Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Bucciarielli is a really good prospect. He's 6'4", 240 pounds, very high-level athlete. He's pretty fast, but it's his quickness that really pops off. This is somebody who can make quick turns, gets in and out of his routes very quickly, very reliable hands, good blocker. He's just a really well-rounded player, exactly what you look for at the tight end position, and our offense does use the tight end position quite a lot. We currently hold a pretty comfortable lead here on Georgi Bucciarielli. It looks like Capital College is interested in him, but if we can get him to commit before we, his Week 13 visit there, which is very likely, then we'll be getting a great tight end to join the program. We also have Zach Thomas on the board, another tight end, and then here is a custom recruit tight end. This is Hugo Goodchild. He is already committed to Kent State, so he will be joining the Golden Flash, another player who I think I rated higher than his initial rating there as a 67. It's no secret that the weak link of this team since episode one has been the offensive line. We only have one tackle on the board. This is James Hoffman. We're probably not going to land him. We also only have one guard. Don't worry, though. We have multiple athletes on the board who are probably going to move over to offensive line. But this is the best pure offensive lineman on our, our recruiting board. He goes by the name of Ryan Neal from Hobart, Indiana. Ryan Neal is a really, really good prospect. We landed a 76 overall guard last year in recruiting by the name of Garrett McCullough. He's been the starting right guard, and I think Ryan Neal could be the starting left guard for us as soon as next season, and I think Neal and McCullough can make a really nice duo together. This is a tight battle, though. Minnesota and USC are right in the thick of things. I'm probably going to take 100 points off of somebody to give to Neal because I really want to get him, so hopefully we end up landing him. No centers on the board as we move to the defensive line. We've got a couple defensive ends here. This is Akshar Patel from South Carolina. Another guy who's not being totally sought after. So I think, again, once we get more guys to commit, we're going to put points into him and hopefully have him commit soon. And then Cedric McNeil, he is another Juco product who could be a day one starter for us next season. 
The defensive end custom recruit we have here is Marco Ellis, who unfortunately is a little bit too good for Metropolis as he's in a tight battle between Florida, Florida State, and Auburn. So regardless, he's going to be going to a very good school. Defensive tackle is a position I'm really going after, and we've got three talented players on the board, headlined by Brian Slater from Gonzaga College High School. He hails from Countryside, Virginia, but has moved up to Washington, D.C. here for his high school career. This is an extremely talented player. He's already a 75 overall and could be our highest rated defensive tackle going into next season. Despite that, he hasn't really gotten a whole lot of buzz on the recruiting trail, and there's not really some clear reason. I guess all of these teams are overlooking him, but we recognize that this kid could be really, really talented, and even though we are the only scholarship for him, hopefully that means we'll be able to land him pretty soon. We've got some other players who are a little bit worse here in Jared Vincent and Dallas Jones. Jones is very likely to commit to us. Vincent, I'm not so sure. At linebacker, we've got a lot of guys here, including maybe my favorite prospect on our entire recruiting board, two-star Napoleon Abubakar from East Orange, New Jersey. So this kid is super raw, but the sky is the limit. He is six foot eight, 214 pounds, and is a freak of nature. He has 99 jumping, 99 stamina, very fast, great acceleration, great agility. He's a little bit raw as a pass rusher, but I think if he were to redshirt this upcoming season, gain about 30 or 40 pounds and become a defensive end, he could be a superstar for our defense. So if we can develop Napoleon Abubakar, he could be a stud going forward for us. A safer option here at outside linebacker is Chandler Bednarik from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bednarik is another guy who I think could be very good either standing up as a linebacker or with his hand in the dirt at defensive end. Bednarik definitely does not have the athleticism and the upside as the previous player we talked about, Napoleon Abubakar. But I think Bednarik is going to be a lot better right away and somebody who could contribute pretty early on in his collegiate career. Solid athleticism, 82 finesse moves, that's a big deal. He can get after the quarterback, he can stop the run. There are a lot of teams in the battle for him, but we do have a very comfortable lead. As long as we get him to commit before his pit visit at week 9, we should be fine. We've got a few other linebackers here on the board with Marcus Fry, John Love, and Lionel Brothers. Custom recruit Jake State Firm, we were going after him, but looks like he is headed to Iowa. So he's going to be a Hawkeye this upcoming season as we move to middle linebacker. We've got Zakiah Wiggins from Holbrook, New York, two-way race between us and Oklahoma. And then Josh Williams. We talked about him earlier as one of the low lock guys. Of the four low lock prospects, he's definitely the one I want the most. I think he's going to be the most challenging to get because right when we sort of got interested in him, Texas as well got interested in him. And I think he's going to be a lot more tempted by possibly playing for the Texas Longhorns than little old Metropolis. But if we can put points into him hard and really stay in this battle with Texas, you never know. He's a very well-rounded player. He can make plays in the backfield, good enough in coverage, decent enough athleticism. He's a jack-of-all-trades and really doesn't have many weaknesses, and I think he could be a great get for us, even though we don't really need linebacker that bad. He does come from a pipeline state, however, which is why we were allowed to put him on the board. A lot of corners as we start with Mike Givens, a local product. He's playing for Archbishop Carroll High School in Washington, D.C. This is the same school that Figgy Yakabuti played at corner last year. He obviously committed to us and is currently getting redshirted. Again, we're continuing to build the pipeline here with Archbishop Carroll, getting three commits from their school last year, and we have three guys from their school on the board this year. Givens is a 72 overall, 85 man, 85 zone. I wish the press coverage was a little bit higher, but the fact that he's good in man and zone is a big deal. I think this is going to be a tough battle for us to win, but we're certainly going to try, and hopefully we can stay alive going into the offseason. Here is Malachi Foltz from DeMatha Catholic, another local product and custom recruit. He has really good size and length, 6'1", 181 pounds with a good wingspan as well. He's not as highly rated as some of these other corners on our board, but if we don't get somebody like Mike Givens, Malachi Foltz will be a great fallback option. And even so, if we do get Givens and Foltz, I think Malachi Foltz might have a little bit more athletic upside with him. He's certainly not as good in coverage right away. 74 zone isn't ideal, but he's thickly built. He is 
pretty flexible, decent enough speed, and this is a lead that we comfortably are ahead in. Hopefully, we'll get him to commit within the coming weeks. We've got another very talented corner. This is Sean Blunt from Santa Rosa, California. One of the three players on the board who we're going after who hail from west of the Mississippi River. Sean Blunt is a 74 overall. He is really good, one of the highest rated players on the board and probably would be a starter for our defense next year, which is saying quite a bit because we have accumulated a number of young and talented players at the cornerback position last year and likely this year. This is going to be a very tough battle, but somebody who's six foot two, he's a little bit slim at 170 pounds, but he has great height, great arm length, 88 man, 84 zone. He's going to be good right off the bat. I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to be able to get him. It seems like Boise State and Virginia Tech are a little bit higher on his list, but hopefully we can continue to put a lot of points into him and keep that battle alive going into the offseason. Kenny Clark and Jason Williams, two other talented players on the board as we do with a custom recruit here. The number one corner in the nation, Takeo Green, who is headed most likely to Duke. He isn't officially committed there, but it seems like a done deal that he will be a Blue Devil. We've got a lot of safeties on the board here. That starts with Lewis Reed. He is from Gonzaga College High School, 6'1", 200 pounds. This is a battle that I don't think we're going to win. It seems like the Navy midshipmen had the upper hand on us, but I think he's too talented of a player to take off the board, so I'm going to keep trying. That was my logic last year with wide receiver Osiris Young. For the longest time, it looked like there was no shot we were going to win that battle, but I kept going after him, and obviously we ended up landing him. So hopefully we can get lucky again here with Reed, who ended up being a gem. He has 94 speed, which is a big deal. So hopefully his visit at Navy in Week 10 doesn't go all that well, because that'd be big for us. Here is Luis Miles from DeMatha Catholic. It's a two-team race between, again, us and Navy. Just like how Navy has the lead on Lewis Reed, I think we have definitely the lead here on Luis Miles. I'm still going to give Miles a lot of points because I want to ensure that we're going to get him. We've got a lot of good safeties on the board this year, and I would hope to get at least one. I think Miles being the most likely. 6'3", 185 pounds. He has great size, very good in zone coverage right off the bat. He's pretty good in run support as well, so hopefully we can get him to commit before week 10 when he's going to be visiting Navy's campus. We've got another safety on the board, a Canada native. He's from Montreal. This is Bonaventure Thibodeau. 5'11", 203 pounds, one of the best international prospects in this year's recruiting class. He played his high school ball in Canada and is looking to come here to the States for college. It's a two-way race between us and New Mexico State as the Aggies currently have a slight lead on us, but sort of like with Lewis Reed, even though I don't think we're going to win this battle, I'm going to keep going after him because I think he's such a spectacular football player and I would hate to lose out on him. So we're going to continue to give him a lot of points, even though I don't expect to get him. I do really like his skill set. He doesn't really have many major weaknesses right off the bat, which is a pretty big deal. As long as his visit during week 11 doesn't go all that well, I think we do have a shot at him. The number one safety in the class is a custom recruit. This is Chris Gentry. He is already committed to Ole Miss, so it looks like he will be a rebel. We have no special teamers on the board. We have one strong safety. This is Ryan May. He's a 68 overall. We do have the slight lead there. And then we've got three athletes. I think the best one of the group is Tyler Rutledge. He is definitely going to be an offensive lineman. He doesn't really have many other great skills. I think he's played a little bit of defensive line in high school, but he's definitely better on the offensive side of the ball, and I think that's where he's going to play in college. That's a good thing because, again, it's no secret that we need offensive line really bad. He's been playing left tackle for St. Francis, but I think he could really go anywhere along the offensive line, tackle, guard, or center, you name it. I think he can play there. Highly athletic, 90 acceleration is a big deal, 85 strength as well. We should win this battle, but Penn State is having him on a visit this week, so maybe they'll get back into the thick of things. Here's Elliot Hughes from Duncanville, Texas. Duncanville is one of the powerhouses of high school football. Again, another offensive lineman. And then here's Maurice Utley. He's a low lock guy, also probably an offensive lineman, although both Hughes and Utley would probably be pretty good on the defensive line. If we get either of them, they're most likely going to be O-linemen. So that's going to conclude the recruiting special here. Let me know what you thought of the prospects on the board. Which ones were your favorite? Many of these guys were custom recruits who we talked about. So again, if you would like a custom recruit for next year, make sure to go join the Discord server. The link is in the description and you'll be able to create your player and he'll have a chance of getting selected. 
So I hope everybody enjoyed. Next episode, we'll get back to conference play. Our next game is against Memphis, one of the better teams in the American Athletic. Should, should be fun. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Peace out.